let's see somebody else get a little mad for us about something I think that we are also a little mad about. You know him. You love him. It's Vinnie Politan. Show, show, He's the lead anchor of Court TV. I personally love Court TV. Fantastic channel. And apparently, according to my producer's notes, he has some very strong opinions on Donna Adelson. Guys, Vinnie Politan is a menace in this video. We see him all the time on my live stream. We talk about him all the time. He's a former prosecutor. He's great. He's very, very funny. But these are some of the most brutal Vinnie takes I've ever seen. Give it to me, Vinnie. Is she really there naked? Unprecedented levels of victimhood. <laughs> I have one that is so painted. What? Donna Adelson. If you've been keeping up with the Dan Markell case, which is absolutely insane, Wendy Adelson, her brother Charles or Charlie Adelson, and their mother, Donna, allegedly conspired to murder Wendy's ex-husband, Dan Markell. Charlie has already been convicted. He's guilty. It's done. However, in order for us to secure the conviction for Donna and Wendy, Charlie had to go down first, okay? When you look at like any video about Donna, you see her past emails. We covered it a little bit on the channel. Or if you just look him up on YouTube or something, Donna was the matriarch. Donna deserves to go down just as well as Charlie, just as well as his girlfriend, just as well as the men that pulled the fucking trigger. Personally, I don't know if this ever would have happened happened if Donna wasn't controlling everybody. But let's see what Vinny has to say. I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us today. Hi, Vinny. And we've got big developments in one of the big cases that we've been covering for years now. It's the murder of FSU law professor Dan Markell. Not just a law professor, a loving father. Yep. And that's why he's dead. <laughs> because oh. he loved his children. He wanted to be in their lives. That's all he wanted to do. That is, Vinny. the most Vinnie. important thing in the world to Dan Markell. They tried to give Dan money to move away. The Adelsons. They tried everything to cut him out of the children's lives. And you know what's crazy? You know what is so crazy? Vinny is so right. All he wanted to do was be a good dad. But they didn't want him in the picture at all. The Adelsons. These people were so self-centered, so egotistical, that they thought that they, as a unit, would be a better family to the children than him having a, da a dad at all. That's why they killed him. That's really what they thought. Dan didn't have to be here and, and everything would be fine. Children generally like to see their dads, especially if they grew up with them. He was very kind and he wanted nothing more than to take care of him. And so to just take Dan away like that, ooh, we are only 30 seconds in, give it to me, Vinny. They wanted to move the kids to South Florida, yeah. away from their father, away from Tallahassee. So they were battling in court and guess who's winning? Professor Markell. He, now his wife's a lawyer also. She's just not as smart as he is. That was smooth. He just called Wendy dumb. Hey, let's get it. His ex-wife's brother orchestrated a hit to murder him. In the broad daylight. And they carried it out. And now those children don't have a father. Okay, let me show you a picture here. It shows you everyone involved and allegedly involved in this conspiracy. I'm gonna do this really fast. Wendy Adelson, she's the daughter of Donna Adelson. She's also Charlie's sister. She's the linchpin. The only connection all of these people have to Dan Markell. She's 100% involved. Donna Adelson, the matriarch. She thought she was so fucking in charge. Charlie Adelson, quite frankly, a bitch. He was scared of his mom being mad at him. He was scared of not being a picture perfect son. And not to mention, he was like running the whole family business with them. He was doing anything mom said. I'm surprised that he didn't sleep on the floor in the bedroom that they were both in. Charlie Adelson, a bitch, and now a convicted bitch. That's what I like to see, amen. We also have Dan Markell, of course, loving father, the victim. These three over here are the people that were actually involved in the day of the murders. Catherine was Charlie's girlfriend at the time. Barely. Charlie acted like Catherine was a stalker that was obsessed with him. And I don't know, maybe she did really like him. Maybe Charlie wasn't really interested in her. And maybe he was just a bitch that was using her to do what his mom wanted. It's so weird. And then these two over here, these are her friends. They committed the murder for an incredibly small amount of money. And the amount of evidence they left behind is almost comical. But we talked about that in an earlier video. Being approached by an undercover FBI agent pretending to be someone connected to Luis Tato Rivera. That is it. 
Hey, Doug, I just want to give you this. Um, the bomb. <laughs> don't, don't be scared. Listen, I just want to let you know that uh, we know that your family uh, has been taking care of Katie and her friends. that my brother, he's incarcerated. He helped your family with this problem you guys had up there. And we want to make sure that he's going through some rough times. We want to make sure that you take care of, of what he's going through, the way you're taking care of Katie and uh, Tuka. Oh my God. We never saw the bump before. This is her real reaction to the undercover officer. Well, this will explain it. Thank you. So the undercover gives her a piece of paper. There's an article which is uh, noting the murder of Dan Markell, uh, but there's also a phone number on there. So Wendy Adelson, uh, Donna Adelson, I'm sorry, gets this, has a bunch of conversations. The other Adelsons are talking, like uh, the father, Harvey, Charlie is speaking, and then they're speaking to Katie. Everyone starts talking after this, this undercover hands over this note. Eventually... Donna Adelson calls the number. <laughs> but I believe at this point she's pretty suspicious that it was in fact an undercover. Take a listen. I don't know your friend who is in jail. I don't, I, you, you mentioned a name. I don't even know his name. I never spoke to him. Why are we wearing the same I don't headphones? Know what he like. I never met him. I, I'm sorry your friend's in jail, but I don't know what that has to do with me. If you weren't involved, why would you call the number? If somebody approached you on the street and said, hey, I know you were involved with this murder, I'm pretty sure. Why don't we talk a little bit more about it? Here's my number. I wouldn't call that. <laughs> you just gotta listen to me. You need to you ask gotta, your friend yeah. who this person looks like, what their name is, something, because I know there's a big reward out there, and if you need money for your friend, that's the way to get it. I mean, I'm asking you nicely. I don't know who he is. I am out of the loop. It is not me. Mm. Ah! I wonder if the jury will believe that. Dude, his smile. That she was out of the loop. I mean, she's the one cutting the checks to, to Katie. They had her as a, like a no-show employee at the uh, dental office that the Adelsons uh, ran. She claims she didn't know Katie, the one that was connected to the shooters, but for some reason, they had Katie on payroll at the company they owned. <laughs> Unbelievable. So she's been charged with the murder, right? So she goes from a very lavish life in South Florida, right? To now being incarcerated, waiting for her trial. And now she wants, she, she's asking for a psych evaluation. She wants to get out on home arrest. She doesn't like being behind bars. <laughs> Take a look. This is Donna's uh, request for, this is an emergency motion to enjoin jail oh. for evaluation. Donna Sue Adelson, pursuant to the United States Constitution, hereby moves this court to enjoin. Bro, Malia why did Vinny read that so sassy? Is it just me, or did he read that like a little sassy? Like, he thinks it's so funny that Donna's upset with her jail conditions. I mean, I think it's funny, too, but it's funnier when Vinny does it. And direct the Leon County Jail to place Donna in a unit where she can prepare for trial and speak to her family or conduct an independent psychological evaluation in order to be placed in a different unit. I wonder if she's going to pull the old... Uh, Vinny the chin routine where she's all of a sudden, oh, losing her mind. Anyway, Ooh. here we go. Instead of providing her actual medical care, the jail has shown deliberate indifference to Donna's medical needs by denying Donna her necessary blood pressure medicine, not allowing her to shower, and letting her become weaker and weaker as she sits in her cell naked all day with nothing but a mattress on the floor believe that do y'all really believe that the people in jail are not letting this old lady take a shower to me i bet she really is sitting naked on the jail cell floor on a mattress with no sheets on it probably because she wants to have a little pity party for herself i'm not buying it the official told donna that donna quote is a fancy white lady who murdered her son and now thinks she has rights Did the guard say that? What a 
did Benny say about that? Hmm. What's going on there? <laughs> is that standard? Should she be placed somewhere else? <laughs> is she really there naked? <laughs> Let's bring all right, Dow, do you think the Leon County officials have stripped her of all her clothes and have left her naked <laughs> with a mattress on the floor? I think it's just terrible what they haven't done. <laughs> I don't think they have done any of the things that she's alleged. So it's terrible that they didn't do it because she wanted to go to Vietnam. They should have let her go, kept her there. What does that mean? You ever hear something and you're like, is that offensive? I gotta say, one thing I like about Benny is sometimes they be having attorneys up here that just be saying crazy sh Charlie Adelson's jailhouse calls did Donna Adelson think she'd escape. So these are actually, I think, from before Donna was arrested. We had information that she had booked a flight to Vietnam. The flight went from Miami to Dubai, and then there was a layover, and she, the rest of it was going to Vietnam. She was apprehended on the jetway getting on that plane. <laughs> arrested on the jetway is so funny to me because you know how you're trying to catch your flight you're just trying to get through tsa as soon as you're at the gate you feel pretty safe but when you're on the jetway you're on the plane you're like oh i'm free baby i'm getting out of here they pulled up on her on the jetway when she was getting on the plane now to what's trending in true crime as the jail calls that led to donna adelson's arrest have now been released authorities taking her into custody last month in connection with the murder for hire plot that killed her former son-in-law, Dan Markell. Now, Adelson's son, Charlie, was convicted, as you know, just a week before his mom, Donna's arrest for the same crimes. And after his conviction, they spoke on the phone where she mentioned a potential suicide plot. I want to go to sleep and I see my son, I do. Huh? Perfectly honest, I do. Leave a note, they'll know when to come and get us, and we'll do it together. So after speaking to Dan this morning and knowing what they're thinking up there, I don't know if we'll make it out in time, I really don't. How much of a psycho parent do you have to be to drag your son into an assassination plot of somebody he isn't even involved with? And then to later, when you lose control of that, the murder plot, try to drag him into a suicide pact. This is a parent that believes their child's life is not their own. It's hers. Everyone's life is hers. Dan Markell's life is hers. Whatever happens to Wendy, that's her life. Whatever happens to her son, that's her life. The children, that's her life. She believes that everything is hers to do with whatever she pleases. That is crazy. We hear her saying the word we a lot. So we're asking the question this morning, might Harvey Adelson be implicated here as well? Let's bring in our guest in the studio with me. If she was talking about her husband, that point still stands. <sighs> the boy, look, I'm gonna make a decision at some point. The, this, the unintelligible part, this is just an assumption trying to like figure it out, but to me, I think she's in the room with Harvey, her husband, and she's turning to him and then talking to him in these moments where she's like, they'll have to come and find us. And that, that might be why the audio gets a little bit lower there. So I think she's actually talking to her husband. Former prosecutor Noah Pines joining us remotely, law enforcement expert Sonny Slaughter and criminal defense attorney and trial advocacy professor Don Malarce. Great to see you all. Oh boy, uh, might Harvey need to be worried. Don Malarce, I haven't seen you in so long. We've missed you on the show. We know you've been busy. Okay, we always give the external court TV consultants a minute. If one of them says something f***ed up, we moved on to the next segment. Oh boy, Harvey needs a really, really good lawyer. That's where we have to start. So now you know, Harvey's implicated really because he knows everything. Existence for criminal defense attorneys. It's an absolute nightmare. You know, our clients yearn and long for some human connection. They want to talk to family. They want to talk to friends. The lawyers tell them you can't talk to anyone. And this is the reason why when they get on the phone, they believe that they are talking in private. There's no one around, but every single one of those jail calls are recorded and some poor intern in the prosecutor's office has to listen to every single one of them. Exactly, uh, definitely. I mean, those, those days are long days when you're listening to jail calls, but they can be very fruitful days as we know. Uh, investigators here, I'm sure, are watching Harvey like a hawk. Sonny mm. Slaughter, I gotta go to you on this point. Uh, talk to me about what you think may be going on with him. Is he being surveilled, do you think? 
Uh, yes, I believe he is probably being surveilled. They um, might have some wiretaps in place, and because they had those before, they are watching his movements, checking his bank accounts, and they are also reviewing those recordings to see what additional information they may have missed and what they can glean from it in order to seal the prosecution's Donna, case. I wonder if Donna ever fantasizes about a life in which she didn't step into her daughter's relationship. Personally, I think that Donna fantasizes about a world where she did things differently and had more control. I think she probably thinks back on places where she could should have gone harder or like not slipped up. She fantasizes about getting away with it, I think. How many times do we have plans that I really can't have to cancel when they need us for this, when they need us to babysit? So we've been really good nannies and I oh, guess yeah. our job is up because now the boys are older, they can go out with friends, they can do things on their own. Oh. So she doesn't need grandma and grandpa. Okay, pretty hurtful. I have one son that I don't speak with. I have one son who's hosting dead. And my daughter, who I love, is doing this. I don't get it. I don't get it. I said to Harvey, I swear to God, our family was cursed. <laughs> we cursed. By, by you, bitch! No, it was you cursed the family! <laughs> Unprecedented levels of victimhood. Well, it sounds like Donna's feeling sorry for herself. Sunny <laughs> slaughter. I think Donna was so wrapped up into her children. She is having a complete break, which makes her vulnerable to saying things as she is saying for them to pick up additional information about everyone else. She's just having a psychotic break as a parent. So she's got some vulnerability for them to tap into. Oh, yeah, uh, they're listening intently to those calls. All right, now let's talk about the alleged suicide plan. That was something investigators learned through the calls. Now, yes. we know Donna was arrested on the jetway. She had a one-way ticket to Vietnam with her, and that's a country with no extradition treaty with the United States, oh. right? So we couldn't have brought her back if they would have charged her. That's so why. how might have police known about this plan to run away? Well, you guessed it. She told her son Charlie about it. On the after phone. his conviction. It will have been looking it up over and over. If things change, if there is extradition from Vietnam, because we, we've looked at all the places. I mean, I could go to Korea and China, but there's no extradition. Your goofy ass said that on the phone. Smart move, you know, and I mean, she knew there was a chance, right? They would stop her during the escape, or maybe she didn't think so. Maybe she thought she could outsmart law enforcement. Let's bring in our guests, see if they think she really thought she could get away here. Uh, Don Malarsic, what do you think when you hear that she was looking into countries that don't have extradition treaties with us? Yeah, what does that mean? Well, I, I don't know if she's cursed, Julie, but she's not really smart. I mean, it's just... <laughs> It's, it's 101, right? You know the police are listening to those calls. You know eventually that they're going to seize your phone. They're going to look at your computer. And how many cases have we seen here on court TV where suspects and defendants are done in by their computer searches? How to dispose of a body? Where are the countries that don't have extradition? So it, I, I'm sure, as we heard earlier, she is very vulnerable. She's having a really difficult time, and her family is falling apart at the seams. But it's unimaginable that she thinks that no one's going to know when she's talking on a recorded jail line about her planned escape to a country that doesn't have extradition. Right, Don. Noah, I just think this woman is in so far over her head. If she's doing this criminal she activity she that get Florida prosecutors say she's doing, it seems that, like, this isn't her world. This isn't the world she's used to operating in. And I think she thinks she's above the law and that nobody's going to arrest her if she tries to escape. What do you think? I, I mean, I can't get over that two phone calls ago, that narcissistic part of it. It's like... I try not to say it as much anymore. I do still say it sometimes because I feel like everybody uses the word narcissist. But Donna Adelson is a narcissist. She's a fucking textbook narcissist. She's a murderous narcissist. There, I said it, the overdone internet word, but it is true. You know, it's narcissism and now we've heard stupidity. Right. I mean, yep. to, to talk about Bingo. this. Right, yes. I mean, it's just, it's stupid yeah. to do it on a recorded line. And by the way, every time it's like, you're on a recorded yeah. line. 
It literally <laughs> says you before are before you get on the call. Line. Right. And <laughs> you know that these prosecutors are going to listen to Charlie's calls <laughs> just to see what he says out of curiosity. It's it's so easy to press a button now and be like, what's Charlie saying about us? Let's find out. Exactly, Noah. I mean, and I'm sure Sunny and your career, I'm laughing because we all know what it's like to listen to those calls. Sunny, I'm sure you've heard the ones where like they'll actually say on the call, the prisoner or whomever they're talking to, now somebody could be listening, so we got to, you know, like they talk <laughs> soft in their voice. Yeah. You know, they whisper on the phone. That's language. hilarious. That happens all the time. They're another like, language. well, I wasn't speaking English. I'm like, well, you know, they have translators. <laughs> exactly. Dude, that is hilarious. The thought of a criminal like just starting to speak another language on the recorded jailhouse call, thinking that they're so smart and getting away with it. The attorneys that have to listen to these calls day in and day out, they're just gonna send it to a translator. The levels of stupidity that we've already combed through in like 20 minutes is unreal. I wouldn't be surprised if Donna was also a little jealous of Dan because she said earlier she felt like the boys didn't need her anymore. They have friends, they're older, they're able to go out and do things. But even if you're a 10 year old kid or you're a 15 year old kid or you're 18, you're gonna want dad around, especially if he cares about you a lot and he's always been a good father. I think she was probably a little upset that they didn't need grandma anymore, but they would always need dad. I, I think it made her mad. This one apparently is Wendy Adelson's first police interview after Dan Markell's murder. I'm really interested in Wendy's role in all of this because so far, I think there's a chance Wendy might get off of this pretty scot-free. I think Donna's going to fucking jail. Charlie, see ya. The killers, they're gone. Everybody going down. I think there's a chance that Wendy may not. I find it interesting that Donna was very upset with Wendy during that call earlier. She said, my daughter that I love so much, how could she treat me like this? How could she do this to me? So I gotta know, what the fuck is Wendy doing? I'm Betty Politan, thank you for joining us tonight. Woo, it's great to Betty! have you aboard. Well, we learned a couple of things during the course of that trial. One, Charlie Adelson's a murderer. <laughs> and number two, how he just be saying, she, and it just rolls off the tongue. He's like, Wendy's an attorney, but she's not very smart. And then just, oh, what? And number two, he likes to talk. And he talks a lot with his mother. Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Donna Adelson, <laughs> who, by the way, has now also been charged in the murder. She's locked up waiting for her trial. But before she got locked up, after Charlie was convicted, um, there were a whole bunch of phone calls between Donna and Charlie where they're just going on and on and on, talking about, you know, the jury and, and other things. Um, we've gotten our hands on those phone calls, those recordings. Mm -hmm. We have some of them for you tonight. Okay. Um, let's take a listen. This is Donna talking to Charlie on November 7th, 2023. This is the day of the conviction. I said, who's she talking to, third graders? I mean, it was ridiculous. There was she... five black women on the jury. <gasps> one black guy that was a sergeant. I told you about one oh, red look, redneck looking. Little Wait, y'all just roasting everybody. I know some people are like, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with saying the black guy? Listen, we know there was something weird about that. That was weird fucking vibes. What did you mean by that, Charlie? Then he goes on to roast the white folks. A redneck? Hey, bro, come on. Who do you like? 15 year old guy. The three guys that look like they were inbred that were like <laughs> out of shape, 30 years old, looked like they never had a girl in their life. Oh, and like oh. one of them worked at the cat in the Florida State Bookstore. He was wearing a big sweatshirt during the trial a couple of times. And he worked at the Florida State Bookstore. Another one's wife was a professor at Florida State. And another one had other so three people in the jury affiliated with Florida State. Why is he telling this to Donna like she going to send somebody out there? Y'all already got caught the first time. What the fuck are you talking about? Are you just telling me? A coincidence is something that you can't explain. Right. It's just a coincidence. And there is no explanation for coincidence. There is no explanation for the TV repairman, for the TV comment by you that the TV costs about five, and that that's the present that I bought Wendy when she got the divorce. That's the coincidence. Very ironic that TV gets brought up three times in the one player. Very ironic. Mm. Like, if you said to me, what are the chances that the TV's getting fixed on the day that 
this happens and that's her alibi and you pick TV and talk to me? If, if you were a betting person, what would you say? Not even one in a hundred. Dude, he's so and, mad. You know, if you said, what if, like, had it went to show up at the class scene, it means I had to have known about it and that's why Wendy knew about it. And that's why she was showing up. Crazy. I mean, it's crazy. It's what you said to me the other day. It's like a movie crazy. Yo, like, yeah, a movie that you're directing. If your mother orchestrated a murder for hire plot and uh, you went down and you're now going to jail for murder for hire, would you still talk to her? And I mean, would you still talk to her like this? How whipped are you, buddy? You're deep in there. You're in the f matrix, my boy. I would be putting my mom on blast. To me, what he's doing right here is a very small example of intimacy bonding over a common enemy. It's a very fleeting form of bonding. That's when you think you're close with somebody because you're you're sh talking the same person. And to hate somebody is sometimes, it's something that's kind of like deep in you, right? You don't always talk about, it. you don't just run around talking about all the people you hate. So when someone says, oh, I hate them too. And you guys are like, well, we hate them together. And now you're sh talking with them. Believe it or not, bro, some parents bond with their children. Like, oh my God, we're literally witnessing it right now. Some moms will bond with like younger daughters just by sh talking with them. And the daughters never get any vulnerability from, or, or sons, they never get any vulnerability from their parent or their mother until mom starts sh talking. And when mom sh talks, she treats the child like an equal and she's also being vulnerable. So then the child starts to learn, well, if I sh talk, I can be close to mom. Then mom will like me. This is like a really common dynamic. And he's like so entrenched in it that he's doing it even though she just like put him in jail. One thing to know about intimacy bonding over a common enemy, it's not real. If your only thread with somebody, no matter how close you feel with somebody, if your only thread is hating the same person, it's not going to last. Something will change. Now, I will say this, if you guys hate the same person, then you, you know, bond in three or four other ways, you might be fine. Maybe you guys just hate the same person. But if your only connection with somebody is talking shit and the only time you'll talk is to gossip and talk shit on like one or two people, it's not gonna last. And that friendship will blow the fuck up. They're bonding over hating the jurors. They're bonding over Wendy being stupid. Before this, they bonded over hating Dan to the point that they killed him. It's a coincidence. It's just a crazy coincidence, but it, it happened. These coincidences, like, like we just happened to be giving money to Catherine McBanawa for a no-show job, and we just happen to be giving her all this money and these gifts, and and it just so happens it's a coincidence that the the father of her children goes and drives 400 miles twice to go murder Dan Markell, who we're in the middle of this bitter custody battle. Get him, with. Vinny. What a coincidence! You just can't explain this stuff. It's like crazy. These people are delusional. <laughs> they know they're being recorded, by the way bad-mouthing the jury, of course. And Charlie's just shocked that a trial in Tallahassee has people affiliated with Florida State. So and black folk. He said, how dare they? I am shocked that he was able to fix people's teeth. And then say, oh, they never even had a girl. You know who else isn't, isn't going to get a girl? Charlie Adelson, for the rest of his life, you get no girls, no women. <laughs> it's over. Over. <laughs> Now, so Don has been charged. <laughs> the real motive, right? And she was the one in the custody battle. And and I say she had the real motive, but was it Donna that had the real motive? Because uh -huh. it was like Donna that really wanted Wendy to come down to South Florida. I don't <laughs> know. On. Did he really just say that? Did she know? Did she not know? That's a huge question. Will she be charged or won't she be charged? Another <laughs> huge question in this case. So I want to play for you Wendy's first police interview. Oh my God. The moment she finds out Dan is dead. Watch her, listen, and think to yourself, is this someone who's involved or someone who is really surprised that all of this has happened? Because it seemed from the, from the trial that there were witnesses, there was evidence that connected her to having some knowledge of this. She hasn't been charged, has never been charged, actually testified for the state with that limited immunity deal. Uh, but let's watch and let's listen. Wendy Adelson speaking with police for the first time. Oh my God. There was a shooting at 
uh, your home or your your ex-husband's home at 2116 Trescott, okay? Um, your husband, your ex-husband, excuse me, Daniel, all right, has been taken to the hospital. Um, he's not going to survive. Oh, my God. Okay? <laughs> I have a lot of friends. I know. How do you know that? Well, you had two of them up there for a last-minute lunch date, right? I'm going to throw this out there. It may not happen, but you know what my theory is. The killer or somebody involved, they almost always throw the victim under the bus in some way. They don't even just grieve the loss of this person that they, they, they knew. They just immediately jump to, well, you know, he owed a bunch of drug dealers a bunch of money. Some shit like that. It may not happen though. Last minute. Well, I, I mean, they, you, you went up there, you're sitting with them, you have friends. I do. What I meant by it is that Danny didn't treat me very well. <laughs> I told y'all every single time without fail. There it is. He told her that Dan had been murdered at 2.49 p.m. 20 minutes later, she's throwing him under the bus saying he, he abused her in some way. She couldn't even take 20 minutes to grieve the loss of her children's father. You know why that is? Because she already decided and grieved over that decision and lost months ago when they planned this. Oh, are you saying that you think maybe one of your friends would have done something Who like would this? Do this? I don't know. That's why I'm, that's why you're here. And that's why we're talking. Would you ever ask someone to do something like this? Oh. Not a million years. Huh? Okay. Do you think someone would do this for your benefit without asking you? No. What good does it serve? I'm not a big body language guy. I think a lot of it's bullshit. You guys know my videos, sometimes I'll call out little things or little speech patterns. I won't go really deep into body language, but there, there is one thing that I feel like I've noticed quite a bit. And it was initially pointed out to me in a JCS video about Jennifer Pan. And this was years ago. Ever since I've seen this, I do notice this quite a lot in videos. Sometimes during an interrogation, when somebody is, oh, oh my God, oh my God, da, 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 and then they get asked a question and then they have to lie. They're looking all over the place. And then when they have to say the lie, they look directly at the person to see if they believe them. So, oh, oh my God, wait, 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 no, nobody. Quick glance just to see if they believe you. And then they're back to the hysterics. Take it with a grain of salt. Don't go looking for it day to day in your personal life. But sometimes you might spot that in an interrogation and you decide what to think. My brother, um, the one, his name is Charlie, the one I'm really close to, he makes a lot of jokes in bad taste. And it was a joke he made. He bought the TV for me this morning that got broken. And then I was talking to him about whether it made sense to pay to fix it or whether I should get a new one. And it was always his joke that like, he knew Danny treated me badly. And it was always his joke. He said- Reiterating, I, I, throwing know, the victim under the bus. Hitman, and it was cheaper to get you this TV. So oh. instead I got you this TV. Okay. Um, I mean, he would never, <laughs> He's my big brother, and he's been taking care of me since I was little, but he would never. And I, I said, I told that to the repair guy this morning. Right. That's okay. I said, he asked me how much it cost, and I said I didn't know because it was a gift, because my brother said it was cheaper than a hitman. It was my divorce present. What? The officer asked her, did you hire somebody to kill your husband? She said, no, she does the eye thing, right? And then he says, would anyone have done this on your behalf? And she's like, no. So in my eyes, I think that Wendy thinks in this moment that maybe they've come across a text. Maybe they know something, whatever. So she's got to preemptively put out some information to dispel that. So that was her excuse. She says, oh, my brother, he sent a text um, a while ago where he, you know, he got me a TV and he was like, well, the TV's cheaper than a hitman. So he, he wasn't hiring a hitman. If you guys saw that or anything, if you saw that, that's not what it was. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but even my family, who felt like I had been mistreated, would never do something like this. Never. This is the worst day of my life. I, I actually believe it is. But, you know, it's also crazy how on the day that Dan gets murdered, it's the worst day of her life. I, I don't know. Mom, I need you to sit down. I am fine. The boys are fine. Um, I need you to sit down. 
I'm I'm fine, and the boys are and the boys are fine. Danny has been. Da you can put me on speaker. This is the moment that Wendy delivers the fake news to the woman that already knows. I mean, this is the performance that they've been building up to for months. Danny has been shot. Um, and I don't think he's gonna make it. Um, and so, I know, I know. Um, so I found this out around one or two today and I'm at the police station and I'm trying to help them figure out who may have done this. What'd you think? What was our think tank think? Let's bring them in. Joining us tonight, New York City, former senior homicide okay. prosecutor, founder I think we of like Villalona her. Law. Bernarda Villalona is with us. Also joining us in Los Angeles, California, deputy public defender. Why do you say it like that? I'm so tired of Vinny being so sassy. Defender for LA County, Philip Dubé. And in San Diego, California, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, Brian. Wait, I think this guy usually has good takes. Criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, Brian Watkins. Okay, Brian Watkins, we're finding tonight. out. All right, um, I want to start with Wendy Adelson because uh, Charlie's been charged, Donna's been charged, Harvey hasn't, the father, and uh, Wendy hasn't, the ex-wife and mother of the children uh, who were the subject of this custody battle. Bernardo, what did you think of her reaction to this, these questions and finding out this information and talking about the hitman joke? Like, right out of the box. What, that, how does that make her look? What's your gut tell yes. you on this one? Bro, I told y'all, I'm not crazy. That was a crazy thing for her to say. It looks all shady to me. Wendy Adelson doesn't look like an innocent woman in this. Mm. But even though it's just a hunch and just a feeling, I think the prosecution in this case is not going to bring a case against Wendy Adelson unless they can get someone to cooperate against her, one, one of her own family Ooh. members. Because I do know that they do believe that she is involved, but the question is whether they'll be able to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. And unless they can get someone to cooperate against her and whether they're worthy of giving them a cooperation agreement and giving them a deal, I don't think it's going to happen. So we're going to see Wendy instead testify with immunity against her mother. All right, thank you, Bernard. Let's move on. Who else do we have? Philip Dubé, it's, I mean, right is out of her spot? mouth. Is that how you My spell My brother, it? Charlie, talking about- I'm gonna need you guys to spell check our people's names. How do you spell Bernard's name? How do you spell Philip? Oh, Bernarda, I, bro! Talking about hit, talking about hiring hitmen. Um, th what, what should we think of that? Like, what does that mean? She's trying to divert attention away from herself. By pointing the finger to somebody else, she oh. feels in her mind it'll take her off the hook. That's oh. that's how I read it. She reminds me, Vinny, do you remember that Stone solicitation to commit murder out of Florida? I think it was back in 09 or 2010. Yo, Do have we seen him before? Man was stone fucking cold. Make a face. I think it was back in 09 or 2010. Dahlia Dipolito, do you remember her? Also in Florida, she uh, solicited an undercover cop to kill her husband, Michael. And she, when the uh, the cops showed up to tell her that her husband was dead, she broke down in these crocodile tears with the hands on her face, you know, made it look like she was grief stricken. But in truth, she had orchestrated the whole thing. She he said that like he was reading a case file. He said, Dahlia Dipolito. He didn't even move his head. He was the only one who stood I like gain. it. Just like Wendy. Wendy was the only one who stood to gain. How? It would end that nasty custody battle uh, with Dan. She would be closer to her parents with her kids and all of the family law litigation would be over. I don't know why anybody else would necessarily uh, feel that they need to do this for her. What would be in it for them? It's not as if Charlie was super close to her boys, like he was like a like a surrogate father or a stepdad to those kids. It looks like they were all in on it together, and she was holding sway with Donna. Brian Watkins, what did what did you see in that interrogation? You know, I, I couldn't see her eyes. I, I I wanted to see her real eyes to see if there was real tears, if they were really red, or if she was doing the old Amber Heard 
cry as you ask me this question, be fine when you ask me the next question type of acting or lack of acting, should I say. You know, and you know, this is a tough one because you do have to understand that she's the mother of the children. When she's talking, when you're talking about killing the ex-husband, you're talking about killing the father of the children. And that's a tough conversation to sit your kids down and say that their dad is now dead. Does she want to have that conversation? Is she that, you know, bent on on having, you know, him dead and that she would have that conversation? That's a tough one. A family member is a little bit more removed, but I guess we're going to find out whether or not blood is thicker than water. Uh, uh... Yeah, it felt like he was, like, trying a little hard. The other people, I loved their, like, straight-up opinions. But that's not it for the Adelson case. That's it for today. But this case is still developing. This is something that we're going to be seeing over the next course of months, years. And I will be right there in the front seat because I need to know what is going on. Get Donna. Get her.